some historic documents related to a crucial period in life of abolitionist Sojourner Truth are going on display in Albany this week ahead of Juneteenth celebrations. All right, the papers, which are nearly 200 years old, detail her fight to save her son from a life in slavery. Teresa Priolo joins us now with more on the incredible story. Teresa. Yes, Stephen Laurie, if we say the name Sojourner Truth, most people know her story. An abolitionist who fought for women's rights and also an orator who earned the respect of President Abraham Lincoln. But Isabella Van Wagen, Wagenen, long before Isabella became Sojourner, she was a mom on a mission to bring her son home. These newly unearthed documents prove that. Yes, this is a normal day at the office where some unbelievably important and undiscovered fact is now brought to light. In a nondescript box at the State Archives in Albany, a piece of history sat for an eternity, waiting for someone to discover its importance. 194 years after the documents were filed, that day has come. And so I just went fishing in a barrel, and it happened to be the year 1828. And I found a writ of habeas corpus and the associated documents with a woman's name on it. And women were rarely parties to actions in the courts, and so it piqued my interest. So I looked at the document, started reading it, noted the name Isabella Van Wagenen. Isabella Van Wagenen is the woman who we would all come to know as famed abolitionist Sojourner Truth. The documents show the fight Isabella mounted to retrieve her young son, who was sold into slavery down south. Both Isabella and her son Peter were born into slavery in Ulster County. But the anti-slavery law later prohibited selling people to southern states. After Isabella escaped her slave owners and went to work for the Van Wagenen family, they helped her file a lawsuit to bring her son home. It's believed she was the first first woman and woman of color to do so and win. Isabella Van Wagenen was illiterate. She could not write. She could, we don't know if she could read. But so the, the great thing about that document is the little X where she signs. This is what I believe and I attest as the story of what happened. This fortuitous find, one of many at the State Archives, where they're constantly unearthing pieces of history. Some with names you know, others you don't. But together they tell the story of New York and America. As you might imagine, these documents are very frail, which is why the state has digitized them. You can view them on the state's archive website right now. And that's open 24-7. Stephen Lloyd, back to you. Fascinating, it is. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm.